I have an affinity for folding fat tire e-bikes, and when I found out Eventon was entering that segment, I was, to say the least, more than intrigued. And in my previous experience with their bikes, I would say Eventon has an eye towards quality and small details, things important to me. Let me add here that Eventon provided this bike for review, but I'm not paid, not sponsored, nor has anything in this review been scripted or previewed in any way. It's all my experience and my opinions. I said I expect quality and small details from Aventon, and from the ground up, the cinch doesn't disappoint, with 36-hole alloy wheels wrapped with Kenda Crusade tires, 20 by 4.0 fat knobbies, and no rigid fork here. The cinch gets a suspension fork that features preload and lockout controls, 45 millimeters of travel, and a brand. This is an RST, an RST Guide 20. No quick release, though. The front wheel is a bolt-on, bolting to a Joytech hub. A folding design means a tall stem setup, what I call the beanstalk, and the one here is slightly shorter than on my other folding e-bikes, and I hope that's a positive. We'll find out in the ride. The bars are right in line with what I expect, around 580 millimeters wide, and the components on them, round lock-on Velo branded grips, Tektro branded alloy brake levers, and on the right side, a Shimano shifter, a trigger shifter, seven speed. On the left, a thumb throttle and a control switch, one that I know well because M5 computer. I have a love-hate relationship with the M5. I've had four of them and function-wise, they're easy to control. They display all the info in a pleasant manner and that's to love. My dislikes is because every single M5 I've had resets the odometer randomly. And I was hoping this one would be different, but I rode it for two miles around my house before I loaded it up to take to this location to get these shots where, as you can see, it reset to zero. And that's my M5 dilemma, otherwise they're rock solid and we'll talk more about this in a bit. When it comes to folding e-bikes, many share a similar frame design with squared tubes to hold the battery. Aventon likes to do their own thing when it comes to frames, as is evident here. There are contours and curves and smooth welds. Even people that don't like the look of folding e-bikes will probably find this frame somewhat appealing. I look at it and think this is what would result if Apple designed a bike for NASA. They even got the color scheme right if they were going for a NASA theme, though this is also available in what they call slick black, but I like this white. And I could see these fat tires digging into the moon with an astronaut on board. And if astronauts were riding this, they would find a drivetrain with folding pedals, 170 millimeter alloy crank arms, and a single 52 tooth chain ring. The square taper bottom bracket is also the location for the rest stand and the cadence sensor, which is sealed and I assume a standard 12 magnet. The rear half of the drivetrain consists of a Shimano Acera derailleur, a Shimano 7 speed freewheel, 14 to 28 tooth, and of course, the rear hub motor. Looking at the specs from the Aventon website, which by the way also includes a full geometry chart, there's possibly a bit of marketing fluff. Because they list the motor as 750 watts, but that's peak. The sustained output, which is where I put my focus, shows 500 watts for the brushless motor. That's also what they list on the bike's class sticker, class 2, 500 watts, 20 miles per hour, though this is unlockable up to 24. Even on the motor itself, it's stamped 500 watts. And the job of stopping a roughly 60 pound bike going 20 to 24 miles per hour goes to a Tektro M810 mechanical disc brake setup with 180 millimeter rotors on the front and rear wheels. There's also a chainstay mounted kickstand and the cabling and the electronics are per the website IPX4 water resistant, meaning this can be ridden in the rain and splashed with water but not submerged. Like other folding e-bikes, this has a long seat post, extendable via a quick release, and it's capped with a nice looking Aventon Velo Comfort Saddle. Battery controls are on the left side of the forward frame section, and working the folding latch for the beanstalk is simple and quick. The main frame latch works the same way with a similar security knob. In its folded state, this bike, and really all folding fat tire e-bikes, is small-er, but not really what I would call ultra-compact. With the frame opened, the battery can be accessed, and fortunately, the keys aren't required to be in the bike for it to be ridden, but they are required to remove the battery, which is a 48 volt lithium ion battery. Actually, on the battery itself, it says 46.8 volt, 13.4 amp hour, 627 watt hour. No mention of the cell type on the battery, though their website says they are Samsung cells, though no specific model is listed. And along with the keyed retention, there's a rail and groove setup that makes installation and removal a breeze. It also keeps battery rattles at bay. 
I'm liking the look and most of the specs, and the ride should be fun, and well, it is. And I've said it before and it's worth repeating, if you've never ridden an e-bike with 20 by 4.0 fat tires, it's as close to a two-wheeled version of a go-kart as you can get. And I mean loads of fun, even on normally mundane rides, and I've ridden fat tire folders with and without a front suspension. And the fat tires alone do a decent job at dampening, but add a suspension fork to that and it gets nicely smooth. Now this fork, it only has 45 millimeters of travel and it's easy to compress, so it's great for around town, though I think it would have limited use on a trail. At least unless the trails are hard packed. Now I sit lower on the cinch than I do on my other fat tire folders, so it makes the controls a bit more responsive. It likes to dart in the direction it's pointed, so super agile if someone wants to throw it around. Speed wise, for this video I kept a factory 20 mile per hour limit. And I found the speedometer to be accurate when tested versus my phone's GPS, and the limiter kicks in right at around 20.5 miles per hour. Now on an e-bike with a hub motor, you never know if there's going to be a run out of pedal effect, but as you can see by the shadows, they got it right. A perfect balance between cadence and motor output. And the throttle only mode also works great with smooth power right up to that 20 mile per hour limit. Note that the throttle only mode speeds are always limited to 20, even if the bike is unlocked to 24. And that 750 watt peak, that's more than just marketing fluff because this climbs hills exceptionally well, it's powerful. Powerful enough in fact that I can throttle only my way up even the steepest of hills and do so at around 13 miles per hour. I can even slow down, cut the throttle, reinitiate the throttle and it'll pick right back up and accelerate back up to 13 miles per hour and this has impressed me. And if I wanted to pedal up this hill, even in the highest gear, cakewalk. And what if I go down that same hill? Because the cadence and the run out of pedal effect is always a concern on non-torque drive setups, but amazingly, even when I'm over 30 miles per hour, I still don't run out of pedal. Which is interesting because when I was doing 20 in pedaling, I thought to myself that at 24 I would probably start hitting the run out of pedal effect, but that doesn't happen even doing 30, so this scales well. They also nailed the motor cutoff latency because some bikes have a burst before the motor shuts off when pedaling is stopped, but this is a fast transition. It takes one full revolution to engage the motor and also a revolution to engage the throttle, so no throttling off stops without first pedaling. However, there is a brief second when the bike stops before the throttle resets, and in that split second it can be re-engaged, even with the bike stopped. And by the way, for people that don't want to throttle, or live in areas where they are prohibited, a vent designed to throttle to be easily disabled or easily completely removed. For myself, I like to put that throttle to use for miles and miles of effortless fun. And we'll talk about the actual range of those miles and miles in just a minute, but first I want to review some of the refinement and the style that Event has brought now to folding e-bikes, and that style without sacrificing function. And now that I think about it, I said this looked like something Apple would have designed, but they didn't sacrifice function, so that's not very Apple-like at all. Per the event in sight, this is rated for riders 5 foot to 6 foot 3 inches, and there's plenty of range on the beanstalk and on the seat post. And this saddle not only looks good, but it's comfortable even on long rides. And I like the bonus of no tendon damage with these grips. And the fork, even though it's only 45 millimeters of travel, it does make a difference, especially on city streets. Now I'll admit, 20 by 4.0 knobby tires overkill on the streets, yes, but this is a booming segment, folding fat tire e-bikes. And now, having experienced the cinch in person, I don't think a Vinton's entry into this market is going to go unnoticed. It brings impressive style, quality, and decently specced features with an outstandingly powerful motor. That M5 computer though, with the odometer resets, I've gotten to where I just set the timer or watch voltage so I don't have to see it happen. The plus side is that I think if there's anyone that would fix this, and I assume at some point a vent will see this video, and I assume when that happens, it'll be a vent that takes up the reins and finds out what's going on here, but how am I the only reviewer that has mentioned this? Because I've seen a couple of comments from my viewers with their M5s having the same issue, so I know it's not just me. And I would also like to know if the throttle can be set to work without a pedal cycle being required to engage it because I'm lazy. And no doubt someone will point out the lack of fenders. Now there are fender and rack mounts on the bike, but I don't know if these are available as accessories on the Aventon website. And now let's talk about ranges with that 750 watt peak motor and that 627.1 watt hour battery. 
Aventon has what they call real-world testing on their website that shows results for all available modes. But as of this video, I haven't tested ranges in all the modes, but I do know throttle only. Now let me state that on their website, they do say that their quote real-world testing was done on flat ground, but my real-world has hills. They say 20 miles per hour? Check. Range, they claim 30, I get 19, but that's with throttle only and that's well above any other e-bike I believe I've ever ridden. I also have the results for pedal assist 5 or max assist, which they claim also 20 miles per hour, which is true. Range though, not 38, remember hills. My peak, 29 miles per charge on pedal assist 5, which to me is outstanding. I also checked all their stated speeds versus the respective pedal assist levels and found that all of those are accurate. So not bad. Now looks, quality, and decent performance, they do have a price. The Cinch is $14.99. This is a very competitive segment, but Aventon is a known brand that's known to stand behind their bikes, so perhaps they can get some headway. Ultimately, it's the buying public that's going to determine that, so let me know what you think about the cinch. Is this just another fat tire folder? Or has Aventon created something worthy of consideration? Comment below and let me know. And also, I'm not the only one that sees NASA moon bike in this, right? I mean, especially with this crest white color. Be sure you're subscribed and you have that notification bell active because it's the only way to get alerted when there are new videos on this channel. Thanks to everyone for watching Kev Central and have a great day.